Hello, this is Mathieu from uh, Consensus Lab in Perco Labs and uh, the second video in the series on MIR, our framework for, uh, this, for implementing distributed systems. This time we will be looking at actual coding using MIR and namely uh, using a ping pong little uh, toy application that will first model and on, on paper and then we will show how to code it using the MIR framework by writing actual code. So let's get to it right away. In the introduction, in the previous video, you saw uh, what uh, what distributed systems model we consider, <clears throat> what is a node, what is an algorithm, what is message passing, how, uh, how event-based abstractions work, and how we use them to model distributed systems and protocols. And uh, you also saw a very high-level overview of MIR itself, namely what it is, how it works, and uh, how a distributed system is modeled using MIR. If you did not see the video yet, you can click on uh, this button that will get you to watch the, uh, the, the first video. So now I assume you did watch it. If you didn't, go watch it and come back here and uh, let's continue. So in this video, we will see a toy ping pong protocol where nodes basically just send ping messages and respond with pong messages, nothing else. And uh, we will also actually write code implementing that protocol using the MIR library. It will be a low-level implementation using rather low-level primitives, primitives of MIR just uh, to understand exactly how MIR works. And uh, in uh, future videos, we will see how this can be actually simplified because big part of the code that I will be showing can now actually be already generated automatically from just the definitions of the events and messages. So let's get to the abstraction itself. We want to implement a ping pong abstraction where ping, where ping messages are received and pong messages are, uh, are sent. Now, if you remember from the previous video, uh, this is what it should look like, right? There's a ping event coming in the ping pong abstraction and a pong event going out. Well, if you really think hard about it, uh, and remember properly how uh, we modeled it in the previous video, this is actually not the case. Why is it not the case? Because we are receiving ping messages and sending pong messages. We don't really define ping and pong events, which when we're discussing protocols can be usually used interchangeably, but when, we're, when we want to implement it and we want to thoroughly model it, this is actually different. So what is what is it in reality? In reality, we have the ping pong abstraction and it just receives ping messages. So there's it, it consumes events and the event is message received, namely message ping from some node. And it emits events. There are send message events and the me these messages are also parameterized by a pong, mm, mess, uh, by a pong type and uh, by a node to which the message should go. All right, so this is the, the core of our abstraction that, that we want to have, and we will have some implementation inside that will decide what to do on the message on message reception and uh, what to, uh, and when the messages should be sent. Now, if we want to implement it, we need to put together some system that can actually work. So we need a network transport abstraction that can actually execute uh, the sending and receiving, and it will consume the send message events and produce the message receive events. And we also want uh, to start sending ping messages somehow because for now we are only reacting to pings by sending pongs, but uh, we don't send pings from anywhere. So one way to do it is, for example, using some timer abstraction, and uh, we can tell it uh, using a repeat event that it should periodically with period that's specified in the parameter in the parameter uh, that it should be emitting some event that we specify and then it will be periodically triggering that event back to us this this is already implemented uh, in mir 
out of the box, as well as the network transport protocol. So we only need to worry about uh, implementing the ping pong module, which is our actual protocol. So how do we implement the protocol? Well, this is the pseudocode of our protocol, which is actually a rather low level pseudocode. As, uh, as I explained before, we are just reacting to events. Automatically in Mir, every module gets the init event, and this is also very common in specifying distributed abstraction implementations uh, that uh, each module can count on the init event in the start, and Mir implements it that way as well. So at the start, we set our counter to zero, and we will be counting our ping messages, and uh, we set up the timer. So here we trigger an event that will go to the timer module, well, basically go to the timer abstraction. It will be the timer repeat event that the timer abstraction understands. And uh, the repeat event will be parameterized by some event that we define, let's call it ping time here, with a period of one second. And uh, in, our, in our abstraction that we already have implemented in Mir, this event is actually uh, understood by the, by the timer module. So, okay, so we know what to do on init. What do we do when the ping time event actually arrives from the timer? Well, then, we create another event. It will be destined to the net module, to the networking module. Mm, the event itself will be send message event and the parameters of this send message event are two, namely the ping message with the current counter value and uh, the destination will be the other node. Like no, if we have two nodes and we will be, we will be doing it for two nodes, it will be not ourselves, but the other node and we increment the counter. When we receive a ping message, we'll, we'll need to do something. So the event itself uh, is message received and parameterized with the message and with the node that it came from. And then the logic needs to check what type the message has. Either it's a ping message, in which case we just print something to the console and respond with a pong message to the very same node the message was received from. If it's a pong message, we just print the sequence number to the console and do nothing else. This is the protocol logic that we will need to be executing and implementing. How it, uh, so what will it look like in terms of a mirror node? In the last video, you saw what a mirror node looks like. So this is a particular instance of a mirror node and that will result from what we will be building. We will have a MIR node with its event buffer and event dispatcher and everything provided by MIR. And we will put th three modules in it, namely the net module, a ping pong module, and a timer module. The net and the timer module are already implemented in our library, so we can just use them and we will only need to implement the ping pong module. All right, so uh, let's uh, start coding. <laughs> We're going to create the ping pong application completely from scratch. And that means I uh, set up a completely fresh virtual machine that I'm going to log into now. And uh, it's a fresh Ubuntu 22.04 Linux. It has nothing installed on it except for the SSH server and Git. And uh, I shared some folders with my host computer so I can use the IDE to edit the files and the IDE is running on the host. But otherwise it's a completely out of the box Ubuntu machine. All right, so uh, let's uh, clone the repository in the shared folder that I have, um, which is here. For that, I go to the website, uh, to the repository website. I clone the code, copy this, bit clone. So I have my copy of the repository, and then I just go and follow the instructions on compiling and running tests. All right, so here it says we should have go install. So I just go and install go. Oh. 
okay and then i install some of the other dependencies as said on the repository website and it's downloaded now i just need to add the go binary path to my profile so i can use these installed things and i'm good i log out i log in okay i'm back in the mirror directory and now let's uh, start writing some code so for that let me just open an ide window with the repository all right here we go and uh, let's put the sample ping pong application in the samples directory as another sample Call it ping pong. And let's create a main file. Okay. And uh, it's a main function. That just prints something like uh, starting ping pong. All right, let's try to run it and see what it runs. I already prepared two uh, terminal windows where we'll, we will be running the two nodes that are ping ponging. So let's just uh, SSH. Very nice. Let's use this one for now. And we go to the directory with Mir and we go run samples ping pong. Not a main package. Yes, I need to call it main. And it's that starting ping pong. Very good. Okay, so for the example, we'll have two nodes that are ping ponging. So let's define the network addresses. Uh, for the network communication, uh, we will use the in, the included gRPC communication module, and uh, that module takes as input the membership of the system, which will just hard code for the two nodes for this example, and uh, we we give it you give these addresses to the to the module so let's say addresses are is just a map from node id to address the types node id and the address are defined by the mere package already and uh, let's let's create just two addresses there the, the addresses are actually multi addresses lip p2p style multi multi addresses so let's say address uh, node node zero and be the first node the id zero um multi address new multi address why is it red ah because we need to use an error And this can return okay and it's an ip the four address of with local host so one twenty seven zero zero one on pc pcp and let's use the port just ten thousand all right and uh well let's not do too much error handling is in the example but let's all just always panic on error yes okay so that's the address let's say that the address of the first node 
the address of the second node with, with the ID one will be the same. It will both run, they will both run on the local host and let's say on different ports. Okay, we created the addresses and this is this data structure we will need to just go, we will just need to give to, to the network module. So let's say, let's call it transport, transport and error is we have a grpc package grpc new transport and this creates directly a transport module that we can use okay the node i it needs the node id the addresses and some logger so what will be the own id let's take the own id from the command line so own id is os.args1 and its type is node id so we get node id then the next parameter is oh sorry own id the next parameter are the addresses and uh, then for logging we also use the built-in console logger so uh, logging console let's just log the warnings the logging package is also a sub package of mir okay there's a problem with the addresses ah because we only need to give it the own address so the address of own id very good okay so now we need to Okay, let's check the error. And we panic on error. Now we need to start listening. We need to tell the transport to start listening. Oh. And if it returns an error, we panic. So starting the transport means that the, the ports will be opened and we can start receiving messages from other nodes. And now we need to still connect to other nodes. So transport.connect to the other nodes. And uh, yes, we need to give it a context. So let's just give the background. And we, need, we give it the two addresses that it needs to, that we need to connect to, including the own address. All right, so now we basically created a network, network module for two nodes that will that mirror will be able to use uh now let us uh, let us create the mirror node so the mirror node we created using the function mirror.new node so node and return to error as well mirror.new node and now what arguments do we need to give the node we need to give it the ID of the node, which is the own ID, yes. Then uh, we need to configure it. And we can, yes, we can give it the configuration, which is basically just, let's, let's use the default configuration. Mm -hmm. Dot default node config. Okay. Now, what else do we need to give the node? Now we need to give it the modules. So the modules is a map of module ID to actual module. And uh, the only module we created so far is a transport module, and we can call it transport. So we give we we the node will only contain the transport module for now. Okay, and then it needs to it needs to get uh, the right hand log and the interceptor which we are not using. So we just say nil. I forgot a comma. Good. 
so we this is how we create a node in Mir. Uh, if there's an error, we panic. And when we create a node, we need to start it. We need to run it. So we say node dot run with some context. Well, let, let's use the background context. And uh, this is a blocking function that will block until the node stops running and it returns an error. And actually, let's put it there. Yeah. So since this is a blocking function, we need to put it uh, in a separate Go routine so we can continue executing. So we say Go inside and uh, let's just create a channel for the error to be written to that's so we, we have access to it when the node finishes all right we say we can say here that the mere node is running And we can have it run for, I know, for 10 seconds, just as an example. And then we stop it. When we call node stop, this will make the run function return. The error will be written. And we can, uh, we can read the error and print it out. The error in this case will not be nil. It is a there is a specific mere defined error which is say which says uh, that the node shut down on request. So it is not nil, and we still can print it. So mere node error is this. And I need to print that and a new line. All right. Let's run it for five seconds. And let's try to run this. Now we create the transport. And we create the node. We run the node and then we stop it after five seconds. So let's see what happens. We run the ping pong. Yeah, first time it needs to download a bunch of libraries and compile. There's some problem because I have a wrong format of the multi address. Another problem. Ah because now I need to give the node its own ID. So it's the own ID will be zero. And here we go. We're starting ping pong. And uh, the node doesn't start. Why doesn't the node start? Because here the transport needs to first connect to all the other nodes. And we don't have the other node running. So let's run the other node. So we run the same thing. but with ID one. I happen to have something like this in this directory as well, but I actually didn't SSH to my virtual machine. So SSH near VM. I go to the mere directory and now I run it with ID one. This new node is running now and will finish in five seconds. This guy didn't even manage to try to reconnect. So let's try to run them at the same time. Now both nodes are running. And after five seconds, they shut down. And they said the error is stop at caller request. Exactly. All right. So we have a basic, we have a node up and running. It connects to the other node and it does nothing. 
So now it's time to start implementing our ping pong protocol. It's what the nodes will actually do. So for that, let's create a new file. Let's call it ping pong. All right. The ping pong protocol will be implemented as a passive module. And uh, the passive module is just a module that implements one function, namely apply events, as we saw in the presentation. So let's say it's type ping pong is a struct that will represent our module. And uh, we implement the passive module interface. We, we generate code, implement methods, passive module. Yes. And we do it, we make it a pointer one. Okay. So this implements module function is just a dummy function that says that this is actually module. We don't need to implement anything inside there. And the only thing we actually need to implement is applying events. So here, the apply events function receives a list of events and uh, returns another list of events and an error. So let's rename this to something else because events is also the name of a package with the events. And uh, we already have a convenience function in Mir in the modules package where we specify just the handler function and it will apply this function to all the events. So we return only the modules apply events sequentially. There's one there's one for applying or applying them concurrently as well. And uh, we give it the events and we need to give it a function that takes a single event and returns an event list. For that, let's implement it also as a method of the ping pong. Okay. So here we have our apply event function that doesn't take a list of events, but a single event, which is a, which is a protobuf uh, generated file, uh, protobuf generated object and uh, returns an event list. So we pass the function here. And now we need to, we need to start defining how to apply events. So what events are we going to apply? Well, our, our function, let me show you the pseudocode again. We have a, we have an init function, we have a ping time, uh, we have an init event, we have a ping time event, and we have a message receive event. Let's try for the start, just ignore the, the timer and uh, let's define our ping and pong messages so in order to define a message we need to go to the protos directory because all the protobufs are defined here and the messages are also expressed as protobufs and uh, let's create another protobuf directory called ping pong pb, ping pong protobuf with a file inside that will that will define the messages. Ping pong pb proto. Yes, add it to the repository, whatever. Okay, so it's a proto file. So let me just uh, write the header of it syntax is proto3 package will be ping on pb and the go package will be github.com Filecoin project near. This is our uh, this is our code base, and we put in the 
PKG slash PB for protobufs in ping pong PB. Because all the protobufs are assembled in PB. These are the protobufs, and those are those are generated when we when we run the generator. Okay, so now let's define our our messages. We have a ping message and a pong message. So let's say message ping, and uh, let's give a payload, some dummy payload to each to each ping message, like the sequence number, for example. Let's yeah, I mean, you uh, in sixty four. And this will be something that the message carries. And the Pong message will, let's say, it will just return the same sequence number of the ping message. So this is the Pong message with some sequence number. OK, now both these messages will be, will be um, a subtype of the message of, of a ping pong message. So let's say we put we create a message and we call uh, we call it message and it will be it will only have one one of field let's call it type just out of convention and for historical reasons this is how we usually do it in mir and it will be one of ping or pong so the ping message is a ping pong message and the or the ping pong ping message is a message and the pong message is a message. Now this message we need to register it with the mere messages. For, to this end we go to the proto uh, file with the message. Some dependencies are not loaded by the by the IDE yet, but it's okay. And we just add another type of message namely we say ping pong pb actually ping pong pb and it's gonna be ping pong pb dot message this will be a ping pong message number five Okay, now that we registered the ping pong message type with the general message type, we only need to tell the protobuf compiler to also use it for generating the code. And uh, for that, we just add it to the generate.go file and say ping pong pb slash pong pb dot proto. I think we are ready to compile the code, to compile the protobus. Okay, there is some problem here because I have a typo somewhere. Yes, I have a typo here. So I need to rename this to ping pong pb. Very nice. Now it's generating the first time it runs, it needs to download some dependencies. Okay, so we have our we have our ping pong messages ready. And they're registered with ping pong. Now uh, with the main message type. So we can go back to our module implementation and now we can already use the message types we have. So let's see what we can uh, what we need to do to implement the module so we receive an event and this function needs to handle needs to basically say what to do when handling the event there are many different event types so depending on the type we decide what to do so i go switch based on the event type uh, is events dot type dot type and first thing we wanted to do was the init event and let me be some be consistent here and say we return 
the result of an apply init function, we define in a function what happens on apply, on apply init. On apply init, let's say we do nothing for now. We just return an empty event list. And no error. Because we have nothing to initialize so far. Okay, the next case. Uh, it can be a message received event. Event DB. Event message received. And if if the event is a message received event, then we just handle the message using a function apply message received. Um, ping pong apply message received and what it re what it receives is the received message so here if the event type uh, is message received the actual type is stored in the e variable and uh, in the message received is how protobus work and this event we get as an argument to the message received application uh, had, um, function. Okay, now we need to decide what to do with the received message and we decide based on the message type. So we actually do something, we don't do nothing and we say switch uh, message dot message dot type and uh, the only kind of message the ping pong module will be handling will be a ping pong message as uh, we defined it in the protobus and only the ping pong message then will uh, have two subtypes called ping and pong so we uh, we have one case type type like this so case message db message ping pong that's the only message type we will handle We'll do something and by default, we just complain that we don't know the message type. Unknown message type of this type. Very good. All right. So now we have, when we have the ping pong message type, we have another switch statement distinguishing the ping and the pong message. So we write switch. M is this is message dot ping pong dot type. And here we have two cases, one for ping, one for pong. So let's say message ping is one. Case message pong is the other one. And we always call the corresponding handler function that we only write here and we define it later. So apply bing with message dot ping, why not? And a sender. And it's a node ID. Okay, why don't we have the sender? Ah, because it's both from. All right, the same goes for the pong message. And this will be the pong message. And now we can define the handlers. Okay, let's see what the copilot suggests to us. We get the ping and the from. Oh, it's very smart. And we do nothing for now, let's say. And the the other one will be the pong message, doing nothing. Okay. So we have the skeleton, and now we decide what to do on the reception of the ping message. Well, let's say we print a message saying that we received the ping 
so f and d and d dub print ln received ping message and what we want to do on the reception of the ping message is to respond with a pong. Okay, now we need to create the pong message. I could start creating the protocol buffer here directly, but I prefer having a constructor function that is uh, much less ugly and much less cluttering the code here. So I'll make another sub package here called something like uh, whatever protobus or that are specific for the ping pong module. I call create a file called protobus.go. Here I'll just write some helper functions to create the protobus I need. Now here I will I'll be writing them manually, but uh, in fact, in the newest version of Mir, this can be actually generated by a code generator. So you won't have to write it uh, by hand, but it's a nice exercise to understand how this actually works. So first let me create a function that returns a general message from a ping pong message. So message, it, it, it's in the ping pong protobufs and uh, I need to define this module, which, it, which has some module, I, which is a type of module ID. Well, and the message itself. Ping pong pb dot message. This is a ping pong specific message. And it, it returns a general message that will contain the ping pong message. So let's see what the copilot suggested to us. Yes, we create a protobuf general message. The destination module is the destination module. We give it as an argument. The PB method just returns a protobuf specific representation of this custom type. And uh, it has this one parameter, which is type, and it has it is the ping pong message type, and it contains the ping pong message itself. So this is how protocol buffers work in Go. And now we can create two more functions with the specific ping and specific pong message. So first we create a, we create a ping message and uh, we give it the destination module and uh, a sequence number because we defined the message to have a sequence number. And uh, what we return is a message, the general message, and we here not have to just create the protocol buffer for a ping pong message. Let's see what the suggested code works. So the destination module is just given in the argument, and here we just construct a protocol buffer representation of a ping pong message with the type ping and the content will be a ping message with a given sequence number. Very nice. And now we do the very same thing for the pong message. Pong message has a destination, some sequence number, and we create a message with type pong. And this will be pong. And the pong message will be the content. So this is just boilerplate code. And again, this can actually be generated. I just wrote it by hand here to demonstrate how it works. All right, so now we have functions that will return our messages. So uh, we can go back to our protocol logic. So on the reception of the ping message, we say we received. Oh, we received a ping message from some node and we now create a pong message is just protobuffs dot pong message okay 
Now, the destination module is our module, and our module is called ping pong. This is the destination module on the destination node where the message should be routed, uh, where the message should be routed. And the sequence number will be the same as the sequence number of the ping message we, we received. Ping dot sequence number. And we get the ping message in the argument. Okay, now we have the pong message. So we need to create an event that would send the message. So send message event, send message event. So it's events dot send message and now the event for sending a message doesn't go to the ping pong module it goes locally to the transport module because this is a local event in our node and it says that the pong message should be sent so it goes to the transport module and uh, the message is the pong message and the destination there will be only one destination but it still needs to be a slice of destinations so we create a slice of node ids and from is the is the id of the node we received it from okay and we return a list of events that contains only this single event to send the message all right now what happens on the other side when we actually receive the message? Because eventually this function will be called on the other side, on the other node. So let's say we just do nothing. We only print that we receive the pong message. Print it like this, both of the messages. And let's print the node at the other string and here as well. With a new line at the end. Okay, so now we know what to do when we receive a ping message. We know uh, what to do when we receive a pong message. Actually, the pong message we don't even use. So let's actually add the sequence number of that message here. And here, so we know which which of the ping and pong messages we receive. Okay. Now, if we run this, nothing will actually happen because there's no nothing to trigger the sending of the ping message in the first place. So let's do just for testing now that each node on initialization will actually send one ping message. So I can copy the code from here because it's going to be similar. So instead of doing nothing at the init event, we create a ping message. To the other module with some sequence number. OK, what will be the sequence number? The sequence number, let's say, the sequence number will be 0 for now because we only one. We're we create the send message event okay, and to which node are we going to send the message now we need to send it to the other node what's the other node well let's see uh, the other node is one if our id is zero and in the other node is zero if our id is one we don't uh, know however here what our id is so let's let's make that a property of the ping pong uh, of the state of the ping pong module. On ID is node ID, and when we instantiate the ping pong module, we will pass it our own ID. And now we can say this ID equals. Let's say are this id of type node id and if our, our own id zero then 
dest ID will be one, otherwise the dest ID will be zero. Okay, so we send the message to the destination ID, the node with the destination ID, and we return the send message event on initialization. Okay, let's try to run it. I'm curious whether it's gonna work. Mm. We run here with ID zero. There's a problem. Ping pong go 33. No missing return. Ah, yeah, we don't have uh, the return statement here because we only have two cases. What happens on init and what happens on message received. So let's just simply add a default case that will simply complain that uh, we don't know what to do with the event. Okay, the copilot suggestion is actually pretty good. Unknown event type. And uh, we say what type it is. All right, and line 66, I guess it was a similar problem. Exactly, we have a default statement here. If it's a ping pong message, we do something. If it's not a ping pong message, we complain, but within the ping pong message switch, we only have the ping and the pong. So let's add a default case where we also say unknown, the unknown, let's say ping pong message type. And it will be not the general, but the but message M, the type of message M. Okay. And in fact, here, a bit nicer, we can also just say message. Okay, let's try to run it now. Seems that it started running near node. And nothing happened. Okay, you probably guessed it when I think happened. We have this beautiful ping pong module that we just implemented, but we don't use it. We still just create a node that only has the transport. So let's add the ping pong module to the node. And uh, let's just create a ping pong module directly with own ID being our own ID. And let's try to run it again. Very nice. So each node received one ping message and one pong message from the other node. But this was only one message, one ping message and one response pong message. So let us try to have the node send ping messages periodically. And uh, we can use this opportunity to see how the timer module works, because for this we'll need the timer module. All right. So uh, what the timer module does is uh, is just sit there and wait until it gets uh, events that will ask it to set some timeouts, either periodic timeouts or one-off timeouts. We will be using a periodic timeout for this. Uh, Basically, the timeout receives an event saying it should set up a periodic timeout. And this event contains another event. And with the defined period, the timeout, uh, the timer will generate this event that is that is enclosed in the in the timeout request. So uh, for this, we will need to define our timeout event. So we'll go to our protobuf definition, which is here. And as we have messages, we'll have to define events as well as protobufs. So first we define a ping pong type event. So we say message event. And uh, we are in the ping pong package. So this will be the ping pong event. And it will also be a one of type. And uh, we'll only have one 
event for now, which will be, let's call it uh, the ping time. Like whenever there's time to send a ping message, it will create a ping time event. Ping time event, which is ping um, equals one. And now we just need to define the ping time event. Ping time. And actually it can be a completely empty event because uh, we always know what to do with that event. So we defined the event like this. Now we need to regenerate the protobus, which happens here. And from now on, we can use the generated protobuf. Now we can also add a constructor for that. So we don't have to write the ugly protobuf related code. So let's first write a function that creates a ping pong type event. And so it will be event because it's, we, we are in the ping pong package. And let's see what it proposes to us. That it has a destination module as a parameter and the actual ping pong event. And it returns an event db dot event and it returns an event with the given destination module again uh, the module id represented as a protobuf type and the type is the type is event pb dot event ping pong why doesn't the ping pong event get the normal color ah, because we haven't registered the ping pong event among the events so we need to go to the event pb and register the ping pong event as an as an event type the same as we did for the message now there's only messages and event there's only two things we need to register there's uh, so it's not like every time you create something new you would need to go and register it you would need to do it once for events and once for messages so we'd say import pb ping pong pb dot proto and we add another event that is the ping pong event type of type ping pong dot event okay let's regenerate the protobuf code Very good. And uh, let's hope it helped in our protobufs. Event ping pong. And the ping pong event itself is the ping pong event. So this is just a wrapper of the ping pong event type. And now we can create one more function to create the actual ping time event so let's say ping time event for destination module returns an event with the same destination module and the event itself will be a ping pong event containing the ping time event with nothing inside. All right. And now we are ready to use the timer. So how do we use the timer? Well, let's say that at initialization, instead of sending a ping pong message, we just set up the timer to send the ping pong messages. So maybe we can create a function called send ping that will do exactly this. We don't send ping. And it will return just an event 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 list and an error just 
for consistency with the rest of the code. And the apply init, instead of sending the ping message, will now set up the timer. How do we set up the timer? We create a timer event. So timer event will be events dot timer repeat. The timer repeat event is already a mere supported event for the timer. We can we can actually go and see the implementation of the timer module. And we see in its apply events method, it uh, accepts, apart from the init event, the timer delay event, the timer repeat event, and the timer garbage collect. You can have a look at it later. For now, we don't need the <clears throat> delay and the garbage collect. We only need the, the timer repeat event. So we set up the timer repeat event. So it needs a destination module. The destination module will be the timer module. Now we need an event that will be sent repeatedly to us or not necessarily to us. We Now we need to specify an event that will repeatedly be triggered. And actually, actually it works for multiple events. We only need one, but it's still defined as a slice. So we need to create a slice of events. And uh, we'll create a product of buffs ping pong ping time event. Now, this ping time event will need to be routed back to us. And our module is the ping pong module. And the one more parameter we need to give, two more parameters we need to give to the timer event is the delay with which we want the timer to occur. So let's say it will be one second. And uh, let me put it on separate lines. And one more parameter, which is what we call the retention index, is uh, it has to do with garbage collection. I'm not going to want to. I don't want to go into details with this, but basically this will allow us to cancel this periodic producing of the events. Now we have one problem here uh, because we have a custom time duration type in uh, Mir to abstract time duration away. So we need to cast it for this because the underlying type now is the native time duration. Okay, so we have the timer event created. And what we need to do now is only return the event. So it's actually emitted from the apply init function. So we emit the list of events with the, with the timer event and nothing else. Now we just need to tell the module what to do when the ping time event occurs, when it's actually produced by the timer. For that, we go back to the apply event handler and we add another case clause for a ping pong event because the, the event emitted by the timer will be a ping pong event as we defined it before. So event pb dot event ping pong and uh, now we just need to make sure that the ping pong event is actually the ping time event and not some other event well it cannot really be in our case because you only defined the ping time event as a subtype of ping pong but uh, nevertheless we at least need to we need to assert the type so we we say switch and e is the ping pong type type and uh, we just look for an uh, ping pong pb dot event ping time in that case we just return and let's be consistent, we just return 
p dot apply ping time with the received event. We will define this function later. In general, the, even the apply event function uh, technically could be generated. So if we are consistent in uh, our writing of the code, this is just a boilerplate that we will not eventually need to be writing anymore. Okay, we add a default statement for completeness, just complaining that we that it's an unknown ping pong event that we receive. And now we just need to apply the ping time event. So let's say function p of ping pong will be apply ping time with a ping time event and uh, let's say we say well the only thing that we need to do when the timeout occurs is basically return the send ping so whenever the ping time event occurs we don't really need the function here we just send the ping message okay the last thing we need to uh, do for this to work is to actually include the timer in our node system so we call it we uh, we give the event uh, we give the module the id timer and we create the timer module from the mirror libraries provided code which is timer dot new and this will create a new mirror timer that implements what we need so let's try to run it and now we're getting repeatedly ping and pong messages which which looks good all of them have the uh, have the sequence number zero so uh let's make it slightly more interesting to give them to some some actual sequence numbers which means that we just go to the ping pong module implementation and we add a counter uh for our ping messages and each time we send a ping message we increment this counter uh, so we can say that uh, next sn is yeah let's make it a u in 64 because this is what we defined in the protobuf anyway and uh, it will be initialized to zero automatically so we don't even need to add anything to the init but we can just for it to be explicit zero and each time we send a ping message we actually give it the p dot next sn and we increment the counter okay so let's try to run the code one oh too few values instruct literal yes this is because i was sloppy and when i was creating the ping pong module i just created an ad hoc ping pong object so let's actually create a proper clean constructor saying new ping pong with own id and let's define it properly and this would this should return a new ping pong module so function new ping pong and let's export it just for it to be clean new ping pong and it will return pointer it needs to be a pointer because uh, the module is an interface with the uh, own id being the own id and next sn being zero just for completeness although go would do this automatically 
Okay, so let's try to run this now. Very nice. So now for the five seconds, we are sending a ping message every second, and then we receive a pong response. Okay, so this is our simple ping pong module. It keeps sending ping messages and uh, the nodes are responding with pong messages. And uh, this was demonstrate how Mir can be used to implement the protocol. On purpose, this was done at a very low level. So this was a low level Mir programming tutorial where all the code I wrote by hand and uh, this is not the case usually i will show in the next videos how most of this code can be generated by using something like a domain specific language that that mere supports mm -hmm. uh for this we have a dsl module that will that already has most of the boilerplate code some of it, some of the boilerplate code can also be generated so we will basically only uh need to write the actual logic namely the implementations of apply ping, apply pong, apply init, and so on. And so we'll basically need to define our events and messages. The rest of the boilerplate code, code for example, the constructors that we were writing by hand now, they will be automatically generated. And then we will use other, other constructions within the mirror, a library that would only uh, require us to write the actual logic. One other video, and this will be the very next video, will be about how to use the active modules because the ping pong module is a passive module. It only reacts to messages and events. Uh, so the active module will actually be injecting things. So for this, we will get rid of the timer. And instead of periodically sending a ping message every second, we will actually have the user decide when a ping message has to be sent. And uh, we will use an active module to inject that event into Mir and uh, send uh, the message like that.